My name is Ian Roberts. I'm a painter. My father was a painter. I started accompanying him on painting trips from the time I was 11. During my 20s, I taught meditation. I've painted since then, over 30 years. So you could say I've been searching for beauty both inside and outside all my life. So I want to look at beauty in terms of its objective quality, its subjective quality, and then I want to look at the roots of a few words. Art, beauty, form, ugly, perception, and revelation. And look at them and reanimate those words from the ashes of their burnt out meaning. I've been researching a book on the search for beauty for about 10 years. And every time I find a reference, it leads to another reference, and that'll lead to two references. And it keeps growing and expanding, and it feels like my range of ignorance grows faster than my range of understanding. And I could just see the piles of notes and books rising up on my desk, and I thought, I better put this into some form or it's going to overwhelm me. And so I wrote a first draft and sent it to my editor. And she read it and she was like, Ian, this is not very together, but there is a very interesting thing that you've done. And she mentioned that I was using the etymology of a number of very interesting, surprising words, or at least it's surprising their original root meaning. And so I took all my notes and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the whole thing and form it around those few interesting words and their roots. So I put all my notes into files around that, and I wrote a couple of chapters, and then I got involved in having, I had a show that I had to get some paintings done, and then something else came up, and then there was about six months where I just simply didn't know how to continue. And one day I was having a drink with a friend, a cinematographer, who just happened to be starting a production company. And I told him I was having trouble writing the book, I didn't know what to do, and when I finished it, one day I'd like to do a video. And he said to me, why don't you do the video now? And I thought, hmm, okay, I'll do it now. And so we set a date two weeks ahead. And I can tell you, when you have rented a large theater and you know there's going to be three cameramen and a sound guy and a lighting guy and a stylist, and you're paying for the whole thing, and you're going to be looking at the camera, and you've got to have your thoughts together on it, it really focuses your attention. And so for two weeks, I'm going through all my notes and just pulling out the most salient points, really the ones that really have juice. And so I gave that talk, these five chapters. Now words, we use words to communicate. And the more clearly we can understand certain words and use them effectively, the more effective the communication. If you take an expression like um, Operation Enduring Freedom, it seems like something that may be for disadvantaged children in an inner city school. It's the war in Iraq. I mean, it's that sort of Orwellian slip of what words really mean. Or if you go into a restaurant, you order a grilled cheese sandwich and a bowl of chicken noodle soup and the waiter says, awesome. When in fact, the original root of awesome meant pretty much to fall on your knees and tremble before the Lord. I mean, it was a huge slip in what the power of that word. So I don't want to try to define beauty. It's like trying to define love. It's a very complex idea to just say, it's this. But I think you'll find that by looking at these various roots of a few words, we'll be looking around the idea of beauty and you'll be seeing this fit of different ideas that will be bringing together an interesting comprehension of what beauty is. And we can think of subjective and objective beauty. And that my five chapters are definitely leaning towards objective beauty. It's sort of like a platonic idea. But I think you're going to find, we're going to see what beauty is and where we can find it.